So same as the surface modulation, it can change and like broaden the frequency spectrum of the pulse, which finally like results in spectral broadening. Like same thing happens in this cross phase modulation also. We will see. So you can see the transmitting end and it compare with the receiving end. There's a broadening of the pulse. So what happens due to this broadening of the pulse? We know that it will reduce the data transmission rate for like long haul optical communication systems. And also it exhibits crosstalk between the channels. And the like the uh, cross phase modulation strength increases with the increasing of the number of channels also. Like if you increase the number of channels, the wavelength also increases, thus the crosstalk will be increasing. Now we'll come to the next part, which is the four way mixing. <clears throat> so, four way mixing is also a nonlinear effect. Uh, which arises from the like the third order optical nonlinearity. So this effect is visible when at least like two optical frequencies are been taken, like with different values uh, propagated together in an optical fiber. Like let's say there are two frequencies, nu A and nu B. So when these two frequencies are being propagated, so what happens? Uh, during the crosstalk or during the modulation due to four-way mixing, two new frequencies are being developed. Like new A new B is already there, but another two frequencies will be developed. Like new A minus the difference between the two frequencies, and also new B minus the difference between the other frequencies. So we will get like four signals we'll be getting from here. Okay, from the two frequencies. So this is one. Uh, like four way mixing modulation. As we can see from this one, uh, the graph is there. So, in the transmitting end, we can see four spikes already, but uh, in the receiving end, you can see a distortion is there. The broadening is also there, also, the signal distortion is there. See, this all the data which you are seeing in the screen is actually taken from the software itself, the simulation software which I have used, OptiWave. So in that software, I will tell about the setup. Uh, you can actually design your circuit using the transmitting end transmission channel, then the receiving end. You can put all the components what you need and you can set all the parameters. How much distance you want to take the signal, how much power you want to give, then what wavelength signals you are using, then how many channels you will be putting. So all can be designed in this software. And the data also you can get. You can get the graphical representations. You can get a data sheet of all the data, everything. So actually, this entire thing was done over the this part radio over fiber system, like the communication system over which I have implemented. Actually, you all will be thinking like, okay, the topic is like the radio over fiber system. Then why about fiber optical cable? Because the term itself says that radio over fiber, like we are implementing radio signals over the fiber optical cables for the transmission of data. But actually, see, for uh, having this radio signals also, at the back end, you need some setup in the fiber optic cables for from where you will transmitting this radio signals. So the main work for, of mine was to see the fiber optical part. Actually, uh, in coming days in this uh, fifth generation uh, networking, we will see actually radio signals will be used. Actually, radio signals gives you a broad spectrum, broad range of spectrum where you can transmit data and is very reliable actually. See, the characteristics of these are like low attenuation, large bandwidth, Availabilities is there, then small size cells like uh, building it is very reliable. It's very um, minimal size. Then improved wireless coverage can be there. Then power efficiency. These all things are the characteristics. Uh, this is the entire system of a radio over fiber system. Now see, this is the relation setup. This is the a picture like taken from that software itself. There is a window you will see where you will be designing all these setups. 
see there's a transmitter end, there's a receiver end and the transmission channel. In the transmitter uh, end, you can see how it has been modulated uh, before the transmitting. So for this one is for the self phase modulation. For the self phase modulation, actually, I have gone through many papers for the literature review. So they have been implementing that symmetrical symmetrical post transmission channel. So I have also implemented that channel because the results are coming much better in that. But the main changes what I have did is implemented a amplitude modulator in the transmitting end. I will uh, go through the results also that what changes I have got like better from the literature. So this is the that symmetrical symmetrical post setup you can see. I have used single mode fiber then EDFA amplifier is also there. Then dispersion compensating fiber is also used. So you can see these are all are like why it is named as symmetrical symmetrical post. You can get it like all are repeated. Now this is the simulation setup for the four way mixing. Here you can see for the four way mixing I have used different channels. This is the four four channel system I have used. And in this uh, particular simulation setup, I have used a Bessel optical filter. The results will be shown. Actually, in this uh, software, is what you can do, like it's very much helpful because see, like if you go to the engineers and tell them to build it, okay, then you will be able to test it, like for the transmission and everything. But if there are any fault or something, the cost of building it will be again taken up like you have to go through again changes it is very hectic job but once you can do a simulation it's very easy to like check the parameters you can change in any time then once everything is done like okay i am getting a good result then you can go for the for the build up of this same symmetrical symmetrical post compensation technique has been used in this transition channel OK, so before going to the results. OK, so this results uh, is for the surface modulation mitigation. For like surface modulation mitigation, the performance of the Simulation setup has been studied with respect to variations in the like launch power that is from 5 milliwatt to 20 milliwatt, and also by varying the bitrate that is from 10 Gbps to 40 Gbps uh, for like 80 kilometer to 400 kilometer transmission distance range. So the conventional setup used for the like uh, used by the pre symmetrical post compensation. So the literature was using pre-symmetrical post-compensation, but here I have used symmetrical-symmetrical post-compensation technique. So the proposed setup, see, uh, it followed the symmetrical-symmetrical uh, post-compensation technique, but the improvement was advocated in the transmitter end, as I have so, uh, shown this one. Yeah. The inclusion of the amplitude modulation is there, which resulted much improved values of OSLR. Okay. Uh, this one is the optical signal by noise ratio. So uh, also I have I, I have shown the eye opening of the BER in it is very higher than the literature uh, using my setup. And it is successful for the 400 kilometer transmission. I will show you some graph of SP uh, surface modulation. See, this is the OSNA graph. You can see the proposed part, which is marked in the red line, is much better than the literature that I have got. Uh, These graphs have been plotted uh, through origin. See, this is the BR and uh, sorry, not the BR. This is the power versus the wavelength graphs. 
which we will be getting as in the starting of the as uh, surface modulation uh, i have already said that there will be a broadening of the pulse see in the transmitting end it's very narrow but at the receiving end it's broadening see this is of the literature the middle part is of the literature what i have studied but uh, the proposed what i have given we can see due to amplitude modulation we can see that the uh, broadening is much lesser than that of the literature so this one was the first successful thing i have got the next is this one. curve for the 400 km transmission you can see the eye opening opening and sharp these all are the data like uh, for the four wave mix uh, for first of all it's for the 25 gigahertz for four wave mixing also i will show you the graph okay before going to the graph what i did actually i will tell Okay, for uh, four wave mixing mitigation, the performance of the proposed simulation setup, which I have shown, has been studied with respect to the like variation in the launch power, that is from five milliwatt to twenty, uh, and then by varying the bit rate, that is from like ten gbps to forty gbps for like eighty kilometer to four hundred kilometer transmission. Same for the surface modulation. What I did, I did for the uh, four wave mixing from eighty kilometer to four hundred kilometer transmission. and all the above parameters are been like studied for like 4 8 16 and 32 channels the results are obtained and like compared for two channel spacings that is 25 gigahertz and 75 gigahertz as you can see in the slide itself i have compared it with the 25 gigahertz and this 75 gigahertz spacing actually what happens if you increase the channel spacing especially in four wave mixing you can avoid the cross talk so what do you mean by in the channel spacing increasing the channel spacing means increasing the difference between the wavelengths what you are using like if you are using say for example say 1054 nano uh, yeah say nanometer wavelength you are using so the next wavelength for the next channel you can use like 1055 nanometers so by increasing the channel spacing what i mean here the channel spacing was 1 nanometer so by increasing it means i'm increasing to say 2 nanometer 3 nanometers this is just a example i'm saying but it's very minute values okay not like this 1 nanometer and so like this if we increase the channel spacing you can see i have compared for 25 gigahertz channel spacing also the uh, cross talk can be seen but if i increase the channel spacing say 75 gigahertz you can see it's very prominent the spikes are very prominent the cross talk is been so these are also uh, the graphs where i compared with the launch power and also the bit power and also channels in all we can see like for the first one we can see b we have got a better result for 20 milliwatt launch power then in the second graph we can see for the bit rate of 40 gbps we have got a better uh, graph like you can see it's marked with blue line and for the last one for the variation of number of channels see one uh, thing was here like while i was doing this you can see that the eight channels in the last figure the last graph the eight channels came up to be giving better in the 16 and the 32 channels you can see in 32 channels it's very down there so this one actually i am working more upon it like why this eight channel give uh, like better results rather than the four channel or the 16 or the 32 channel so here some sort of like different results were there but ultimately like uh, it was successful for the 400 km transmission so this was the entire work i did
the cross phase modulation uh, it is left still i'm working on that part only self phase modulation and uh, four way mixing has been done with the inclusion of amplitude modulator for self phase modulation in the transmitter end which uh, ultimately like resulted much improved values of osnr 